everyone. My name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States, which is midday in Australia or 1 a.m. if you're in the UK. If you miss the live streams, you can watch the premiere event streams on a Friday and Saturday at 2 p.m. Pacific in the US, 9 a.m. in Australia or 10 p.m. in the UK. Beck, it's good to see you, Beck. And thank you for the sub, Beck. That's incredibly good of you. Three month subscription. Wow. You've been a sub for three months. Thank you very much, Beck. You are awesome. Thank you for the sub. Now, how have you been? What you been up to? Anything interesting? Anything good? New? What you're working on? Anything like that? You guys know I'm always interested in what, what you guys have been up to, what you're doing, what you're working on, particularly if you're doing 3D stuff. Um, yes, so thank you very much, Beck, for the sub. You are absolutely awesome. Uh, remember to, if you're not sure what subs get you, you can either look in the panels below my stream or you can go to my website, phildoes3d.com. There's a section on my website that will um, tell you everything that subscribers get. If you just go to sub perks, you can find it there. Okay. Uh, Rebranded too, by the way, guys. So if, you, <laughs> if you're looking at this and thinking, what, what happened to Phil? It's still me. It's just that um, I recreated my branding last night. So Beck says, still working on my uni work mainly, making a game as usual. Uh, how was your holidays? Haven't been here since before then. I didn't think I'd seen you before uh, the Christmas New Year break. My break was good. I went up to Queensland to visit my sister and brother. Uh, my sister lives in Queensland. My brother lives in New South Wales, which is the next state down. And I live in Victoria, which is the next state down again. So I was flying up and down to visit them over Christmas, New Year. I took, um, they've each got three kids. So I took them to Movie World on the Gold Coast. So that was fun. The kids liked it. Went on the roller coaster ride, all that sort of stuff. Um, Christmas, yeah, it was good. Ate too much, went into a food coma as usual. What about you? Did you get up to anything interesting? Were you visiting family? Did you have a quiet one? There are times where I just want to have a quiet Christmas. And but the problem with me is my sister and brother live interstate, and the only time I really get to see them is when I'm um, is at Christmas New Year because I, I don't see them during the year, unfortunately. So even though I might like to have a nice quiet Christmas where I don't do anything or see anyone. Um, I'm pretty much obligated to go up and visit them. Not that it's an obligation. I mean, you know, they're my brother and sister. I like seeing them. Beck says ours was kind of quiet, had family over and stuff of that nature. I also ate too much. Everybody goes into a food coma come Christmas time, I'm sure. It's the one time where it's okay to overindulge. Stuff yourself stupid, um, which is what I ended up doing. Uh, I even had a drink over New Year's Eve because you guys, again, no, I don't really drink. I only drink socially. Um, so, yep, even had a drink over the New Year, which is unusual for me. <laughs> and, and boy, could I feel it the next day. I'm not, I'm not a, a good drinker. I, I had a terrible, terrible hangover. But occasionally it's cool. <laughs> you guys know Melbourne Cup time. I generally get drunk then too because I, I go to the function that work put on at the Melbourne Cup and – they always have copious amounts of alcohol and I'm forced to drink it. So, <laughs> But yes, apart from that, it was good. It's been a good year. Last year was a good year. This year will be even better for everyone, I'm sure. Uh, work is starting to get busy for me, actually. The studio is starting to ramp up again. It always does. It gets quiet between like end of November, December and starts to pick up again now gradually and it'll go full tilt again come February probably. But it's good. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, so, yes, if, if you notice the um, the rebrand and you think it's not me, it's me. I just rebranded last night. So, Okay, so what are we doing? We're working on um, incorporating photogrammetry objects to create a new 3D model. Beck says, I like the new icons and logo, by the way. Nice and clean. Thank you, Beck. Uh, glad you like it. Yeah, I, I prefer it too over the old one. It is, it's clean, it's colourful, more eye-catching. Uh, keep it simple, stupid, as they say, the KISS mo me metaphor. No need to go overboard. The simple design is usually the best anyway. Less is more, as they say, all those cliches. Well, they're not cliches, they're true, generally. But, yep, thank you. I'm glad you like it. I'm... I, 
threw it together last night and uh, I'm gradually rebranding on all the social media. It takes a while because <laughs> I've got Twitter, which I've done. I've got ArtStation, which I've done. Um, my website, which I did this morning. Uh, YouTube, which I've done. But I still have to redo all of the uh, animated logo stuff with the little egg bot. So I've got to jump into Premiere this afternoon or this evening and do that probably. I'm sure that there are websites that I've forgotten to, to do it on, so I'll just have to go through my list on my browsers and find uh, any that I need to update. The one problem when you do a rebrand is you've got to um, change everything on every bloody website. Anyway, so yes, we are creating a new 3D model in 3D Studio Max. A few weeks ago, we spoke about using photogrammetry software, and I showed you three different pieces of photogrammetry software that I use. I uh, gave you my recommendations as to which ones I thought were the best and which ones I wouldn't bother with. Um, then we were talking about incorporating those photogrammetry objects into a, into a new 3D model. Uh, now, a lot, of, a lot of 3D guys are getting really worried because uh, AI and automation now can take pretty much video footage or photographs and, and turn it into a 3D model without any user interaction at all. Uh, and a lot of 3D people are worried that that's going to... Um, it's going to hurt their industry. They're not going to get a lot, as much work. Now, that's not really true. It's true if you just take your photogrammetry objects and use it straight as it is. Because, yeah, you don't, AI can do that now. But if you take that photogrammetry object and remodel it into a new 3D model using parts of that photogrammetry stuff to create something new, uh, then you're, you're not at risk of losing any work because AI can't be creative. You know, it's just, it's just, it's too dumb. So if you're creating, if any, if you, if you create anything artistic or new, you're safe. If, if you're just copying photogrammetry objects, then yeah, it could be a problem. Um, but that's like that in a lot of industries. AI is taking over in all these different fields now. So to stay ahead of it, you've got to um, incorporate more creativity into your work because AI can't be creative. Serbian CGI, hello, it's good to see you. How are you? Have you had a good weekend? Did you have a good Christmas and New Year? Um, but I hope you're, you're well, Serbian CGI or Serbian? Serban, sorry, I don't know why I said Serbian. Serban CGI. You guys know I'm terrible with usernames. But it's good to see you, Serban. Uh, so, yes, uh, and to give you an example of what I mean by incorporating photogrammetry into a new model... We've taken elements of photogrammetry like this statue, which was actually against a wall as part of a memorial. Uh, we, we recreated that into these columns that we're going to be using either side of a stairwell. And the same sort of thing goes for this, um, this rotunda. Um, you can see the photogrammetry elements like the dome and the top of the columns here. But what I've done is I've remodeled the columns. I'm... Um, going to retexture them up in Substance Painter and in Mari. I've cut out the center to because I want to put a pond in here. So I'm making it different than what the original object was. So that's what I mean by incorporating photogrammetry into a new 3D model. You're good, Serban. Uh, you did your resume every Christmas in the last two weeks. I've been working on my spaceship. Oh, cool. What sort of spaceship is it? Is it from a movie? Is it from like a Star Wars or Alien or or is it just your own design or just something else, or a design that you're using? Remember, guys and girls, if you have any images you want to show off in the gallery section on the Phil Does 3D Discord server, you can click the blue graphic below my panels that says join the Discord or you can click the link I've just popped into chat now. That'll give you an invite link to join the Discord server. Everybody's free to post links on Discord. Don't post links in Twitch chat unless you're a sub because you'll get timed out. Uh, but everyone can post stuff in Discord. And I love looking at the work you guys and girls are doing. So if you want to post on Discord, please feel free. It's only if you want to. If you're not comfortable, then don't. I'm not, I'm not twisting your arm. Uh, Serban says it's uh, designed from DNEG that I have to create. Oh, okay. I'm not familiar with DNEG. What is DNEG? Is that a game or is that uh, a movie? <laughs> I've never heard of DNEG. Yes, oh cool. So, so Van, you've just joined the Discord. Good to see. Yep, everyone can post a link to their work in Discord. 
Deenig is a, a visual effects studio that won an Oscar last time I came. <laughs> Shows you how up, up with the industry I am at the moment. Oh, okay, so it's a visual effects studio. I'll have to check them out after the stream. I'm always interested in... I, I don't do visual effects. I do 3D and environment work. And I work in ArchBiz now, but um, I'm always interested in that sort of thing. Um, particularly... Uh, I was talking yesterday to the guys and girls about I, I want to start using some of the particle effects basically for this um, this fountain come urn because uh, I want to have water pouring out of these lion's mouths. So I thought it might be cool if we did that using some particle effects. So we'll, we'll do that. We'll tackle that at the end once we've got the design all sorted. Um, and so, yeah, visual effects I'm always interested in, even though I don't get to work in it very much. Hey, Sniper Echo, it's good to see you. How are you, buddy? Hope you're well. I'm just catching up with Discord here real quick. Okay. So, yeah, you're good. That's good to hear, Sniper Echo. Uh, so, yes, yeah, Servan, if you want to show up your work, please feel free to do so. But it's good that... Um, so you've been working on your resume or you, you want to add this to your resume, I'm assuming, Serban? It always takes a lot longer to, to create your resume than you think as well. I mean, I updated mine at the probably around about October last year. I like to do it at least once every year. Um, and it takes much longer than you think it's going to take. When you sort of try and, try and condense what you've been working on for the year and what skills you've got into, like, you know, a paragraph because – you remember, your resume shouldn't be too long. People will get bored and they won't read it all. They'll just toss it in a pile. And I, that comes from knowing somebody who works as a HR manager. I know what they're like. <laughs> Not that I, a friend of mine works as a HR manager and uh, works for an employment agency as well. Another one works for an employment agency. Yeah, if they're too long, people won't look at them and won't read them. That's why I always say to you guys and girls, don't overload. If you're doing design work and you're sending out your resume and you're your folio to studios. Don't overwhelm them with too many images. I, I generally try and stick to 12 or 14 at the most because they're just not going to look at them all. They just don't have the time. So just choose your best 12 to 14 images. If you've got less, then that's fine. But I wouldn't go over 14. Uh, it's also a good idea to tailor your resume once you've got a bit more experience based on the job you're applying for. Now, I know that sounds like a major pain in the ass. Uh, but what you can do is you just set up three different sort of resumes targeting different areas of whatever the field is that you're interested in. So say you want to be an environment artist, you sort of target, you, you reword your resume more bad to have a better presentation as an environment artist. If you want to be, a, a, what's another example, just a general 3D artist, generalist, you, you change your resume to that and then Another one that might be, I don't know, Archbiz, say. If you want to do Archbiz work, then you tailor it more to that. So so you just create the three of them that are slightly different, more targeted towards those three different types of jobs. And then you just send out the one depending on what job it is you're applying for. It'll get you noticed more than just sending out your general resume to everybody. But that, that only, well, that'll only work if you've got a bit of experience behind you that so you can tailor them. To the, to the different job. If you're just starting out, though, then I wouldn't worry about that sort of thing. Just get your resume looking as good as you can. Get your images for your portfolio as good as they can be and uh, start sending out those resumes around. Even if a studio hasn't advertised for a job, uh, I spoke about this last year when I was talking to the guys and girls about um, getting a job. Uh, even if a studio isn't advertising a position, still send your resume to the studio because they do keep them on file. Now, I know a lot of people think, oh, that's just... A cop out. They say that, but they don't. They actually do. They keep these resumes on file, and then if a project comes up where they need a specific type of person, they look through their resume pile and they'll contact you. At least most of the studios I've worked for, that's the way it's worked. So, uh, Serban says, should I post in the Discord? It's, uni it's a university assignment, but I will put it in my portfolio and apply for a job soon. You can post it in, in Discord if you want, sir, Ben. I'd love to look at it. And if you want, I can show it on stream. If you don't want me to show it on stream, though, let me know and I won't. Uh, but I'd love to look at it and I'd love to show everybody. But 
guys and girls, jump on Discord. It's free to join Discord and you can check it out there, but I would look at it on stream if you if you don't have a problem with that server. If you want to post it on Discord, please feel free because I love looking at the stuff you guys and girls are making. So, yes, getting back to what we were talking about, uh, this model. We uh, we have a bit more to do. I've got to put the, the base in and I've got to put the stairs in and then I've got to just do some, some railing work, uh, some wrought iron work like we have around the pond here. So Ben says, I don't have any problem with that, but I saw that there's a rule with links can be posted by... No, that's only in Twitch chat, Sir Ben. Don't post a link in Twitch chat. Everybody can post links on Discord, regardless of whether you're a sub or not. The only, the only I think, um, thing with Discord is you may have to wait about 20 minutes for the Discord server to make you a member. I don't think when you're a guest you can post a link. So you just wait 20 minutes more and then you'll be able to post a link on Discord. That's just to stop spam and, and trolls and stuff from going into my Discord. Uh, I set up a rule so if you're a new member to Discord, you can't post any links until you're, um, until you're made a proper member, which takes about 20 minutes. Android Lust, it's good to see you, Android Lust. How are you? Always good to see you, Android Lust. Uh, so, yes, feel free to post in Discord. Uh, if it doesn't let you serve and just wait about 20 minutes and then you should be able to post a link in Discord. You're doing great? Good to hear. I like it when you guys are happy, healthy and doing well. Uh, so yes, when you do that, Sir Ben, let me know in Twitch chat and we can check it out. Although I do have Discord open, so I'll, I will notice it at some stage. So don't think if anyone watching, if you post in Discord, I'm not going to see it because Discord is open along with Twitch chat on my second screen. Okay, so uh, yesterday we finished doing these um, these columns. I think what we'll start by doing here is we'll start doing some... Um, We'll start doing some UV mapping because we I forgot to UV map them. And I also forgot to do uh, some chamfer on this piece here. So what I'm going to do is we'll work with this one. We'll copy it over. Uh, I should have done it before I started copying these around, but it's only a, a copy. It's, it's quick. So I'm just going to open this group up. We'll isolate this piece here that needs to be chamfered. Yeah, it's not chamfered. Yep. And we will throw... I'm, I'm going to use the quad chamfer modifier. Again, this is not a modifier that comes with Max. You purchase it separately. Max has its chamfer modifier, but the quad chamfer does a better job. Um, again, like I was just talking about yesterday, Autodesk are due to update Max, to, to release Max 2020 soon in the next few months. And there's a new chamfer modifier in the new version of Max 2020 that is apparently amazing, amazeballs. Uh, I, I'm not a beta tester for, for Autodesk, but uh, somebody I know that does do a beta test, that does beta test for them, says it is wonderful. So we'll check it out. Uh, I, I'll see what's new in Max 2020 before I decide if I want to upgrade to it or not. Sniper Echo says, on a side note from yesterday's stream, I got that mesh working. Oh, cool. Once I exported it out of Mudbox, there wasn't any warnings or anything, but an export worked. Good to hear, Sniper Echo. Sniper was having problems with one of his meshes slowing down in the viewport when he was um, working with it for some reason. And generally, that's either a problem with the mesh. There's some sort of problem with the mesh itself. Or you've got open edges or the, so that the lighting is sort of seeping in behind the model and causing performance issues. Possibly, but it's good to hear you got it working, Sniper Echo. Uh, Mudbox, yeah, Mudbox is really strict when it comes to meshes. So if it, if you can ex if you can get it into Mudbox and get it out again, then you'll know you have a pretty clean model. Mudbox will bitch at a drop of a hat if it doesn't like something in the model for sure. Android Law says uh, I was just about to ask about the problem you had, Sniper. Yeah, well, it sounds weird. It's strange that Mudbox, uh, yeah. It's, sometimes these things happen. Sometimes you can just get a mesh that is a, a, piece, a POS to work with. Um, yeah, 3D. <laughs> you know, 3D. That's the life of a 3D person. All right. Well, I'm glad you got a working that sniper echo. 
Um, so yeah, we're going to use the quad sample modifier for this piece. Uh, before I actually add that, I do actually want to make selections. So uh, I'm going to turn on edged faces here. Now you'll know this is a really high geometry piece of uh, a high poly piece of model. That's because we use booleans, and I needed enough geometry to for the boolean to work cleanly. That's why the model is uh, quite high res for what it is. We can reduce it back though, doing an optimize after the fact, if we want to. If we were taking it into a game, we certainly would. I probably won't because I'm using this for a render. But we need to select our edges here. You are going to be a real pain, aren't you, for me to select my edges because you are such high poly. Let's see if we can do it the cheat way, and if we can't, then we may have to go in and do it by hand. I guess a red model with red selections is not the best way to see what's going on, but... Yeah, let's see if we can do it by hand. Let's see if we can use our loop commands. Okay, we can loop the top. I'm hitting the wrong button thinking, why isn't it selecting? It's because I'm hitting the subtract and not the addition. We can loop the bottom. Still, the important thing is you got you got it fixed, Sniper Echo. So that's the most important bit, getting it fixed. You can work out the why later on, <laughs> particularly if you're on a deadline. That's the problem with uh, projects. You never know when a problem is going to crop up. So, you know, you, you sort of think to yourself, oh, this project's going to take me, I don't know, a week or two. And then when you start working on it, you get these little problems pop up that can really push out your timeline. The joys of being a designer, I guess. That and the fact being creative on demand, like if you work for a studio and you're going to make something and they want it by a certain date, being creative on demand is always uh, uh, difficult. <laughs> it can be very difficult. Uh, Sniper says, yeah, I mean, it was a pain, but it's fixed and retopologized, re re done, so I'm happy. Good to hear. What are you, re what are you doing your retopology re re in Sniper Echo? I'm just curious what you guys use to do your retopology. Are you doing it in Blender? Are you doing it in... ZBrush, how are you doing your reach apology? Android Lust says, Bullions gave me PTSD. <laughs> if I can use a Boolean, I will. I love Bullions. Bullions can save me so much model time. Um, they can be a pain to work with. They can give you some really weird results if you're not careful. I understand why people are hesitant to use them, but if you're careful... They can save you a lot of time. Uh, Sniper says, I can get back to my visual effects project. Uh, I did it in Blender with Retopo re re Flow add-on. Okay. Cool. I don't even think Max has a retopology tool. Not that I'm aware of. I'm pretty sure I've not come across one in Max. So that's pretty cool if that's, there's one built into Blender. It's something Max doesn't have. I'm pretty sure Max doesn't have it. I'm probably going to get someone say, Max has had it for ages, Phil, you're an idiot. But I don't recall seeing a retopology tool on Max. I generally do it in ZBrush. You didn't realize it was free either. Well, that's even better. 
So an add-on in Blender that's free, in a, in a 3D program that's free. Can't get better than that. And Serban says, I do it in 3D Code. It's great for that. Yes, 3D Code is another good program. Uh, one that I haven't used personally, but uh, I have heard good things about it. From a few of the guys and girls that jump into my stream, they use 3D Code. They love it. I think 3D Code was the first program to use PTEX as well. From memory, I, I remember reading years ago when 3D Code was first created, developed. I think it was amongst the first programs to ever uh, support PTEX textures. Well, and PTEX are textures that don't require a UV map, so you can PTEX your model, and you don't have to UV map it. Uh, Casualty Derp. Casualty Derp. Hi, how are you? It's good to see you. I hope you're well. It says, uh, all I know is Max's freeform tools for re to re to re topo stuff. Uh, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about with the freeform tool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not not, not as easy to use, though, <laughs> as, say, uh, ZMesher in, in ZBrush. But you are correct. So Phil is an idiot. Uh, there is that in Max. That's true. I did forget about that, uh, but I generally use ZBrush to do it. I find it's easier. But you are correct, casualty derp. Uh, Android Lust says, I was assumed Max has a retopology tool since Maya has one. You're probably right. I'm just an idiot. Idiot, Philip. You're an idiot. Uh, but I don't use it. I use ZBrush. <laughs> ZBrush. Ooh. Phil's using ZBrush for something. Ooh. Uh, Sniper says, it blows me away at the amount of uh, add-ons in Blender, both free and paid. Yeah, well, I'm amazed that, that um, well, that, that it's good that they do because, you know, if you use 3D Studio Max, then anything you use, they make you pay through the nose for. Now, I'm going to start selecting these circular bits, and the risk is I'll deselect the ones I've already selected. So I'm just going to create a selection set here. Just in case that happens, I can come back to it much more quickly. No, we don't want the ring. And now it won't let me do a loop on the uh, edge sections, unfortunately. Casualty Derp says true, although the uh, conform tools and, and going from topology to surface or using strips to get basic shapes is, has helped me. A ZBrush retopo re, re is great, but I feel it's just as tedious. <laughs> that could just be me. Uh, yeah, and actually, I find uh, ZBrush's retopology great. It's pretty much autom automated. Uh, you can get in there and do it by hand if you want, but I generally don't. I just hit that hit that button and it does it for me. And if I need to do any small cleanup, then I'll go in. I'll take that back into Max and I'll clean it up in Max because I hate using ZBrush. Yes, Z uh, Z remesher. That's exactly right. Yeah. If I want to read to apologize something, that's generally what I'll use in ZBrush. Just trying to work out if there's going to be an easier way for me to select these uh, circular pieces. I don't think there is. I have a feeling I'm just going to have to go in here and do it by hand, which is a major pain. My loop command won't work. Mm, yeah, I don't think, I can't think of a way that's going to be quicker. This is, this, this is going to be a pain, a real pain. I think what I might do here is I might um, just go back to my edges selection here. We'll do the edges first and then I really like doing them all at the same time. I don't like doing them in stages. Um, and I see Nightbot is spamming my links as usual. <laughs> yeah, I, I may I may do it in stages. I'm going to do the edges first, and then we'll look at the uh, the half circles. Android Gloss says ZBrush's manual retopology tool is not something I would use. No, I wouldn't use it either. Again, if you're going to use a manual tool in ZBrush, you might as well do it in Max 
or any any other three D add on program that you come across because it's pretty pretty tedious in ZBrush. Uh, but uh, like I said, I, I use ZR, uh, Z Remesher though and ZBrush to do retopology. I find it does it automated and quickly and pretty well. Uh, you can also use um, that program I spoke to you guys about last year, the free program called Instant Meshes. You can use that to do retopology as well. It does quads for you. It does it quite well. And it's free. If you guys are interested, I can pop a link in chat. But uh, just do a Google search for Instant Mesh, Instant Mesh, one word, and you should find it. It's just a very lightweight program you can download, load up your model. It'll automate the uh, retopology for you, and you can save out your new model from there. I generally use it for if I want to do retopology on a photogrammetry software uh, model, because, you know, photogrammetry models generally come out really high poly in their tries. If you want to get into quads, then I take it into, Z, into Instant Mesh and get it to create a quad model for me. And then I just project the texture from the original photogrammetry model onto the new quad model. Uh, Sniper says uh, Blender 2.8 are adding a feature so we can use the grease pencil tool to do a retopology so that uh, we can just draw a sketch around the model and it will be kind of like poly strips. That's pretty similar to this program that I just mentioned called Instant Meshes. In fact, I, 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 I'm going to open it up. I won't pull anything into it, but I'll open it up to show you what it looks like. I'm on the wrong folder. I want my C drive. There it is. It's called Instant Meshes. It's completely free. That's what it looks like when you open it up. You open your mesh. You can you can draw, which is what Sniper Echo is sort of referring to with this new plugin for um, Blender. Draw the, the way you want your edge loops to run around your model and uh, choose the amount of quad detail you want on the new model and export it out from there. So check it out. It's free. And it's very good. Instant meshes. Uh, that's if you don't use a program already that you have a preference for. I generally use ZBrush. I will use this program though if I'm doing photogrammetry re retopology. Casualty Derp says, Gotcha, though it's hard to get specific topology for animation. There's a book called The Art of uh, Moving Points where topology follows a lot of the human muscle structure to allow for more natural animation. Uh, no, that's true, and that's why it's really important if you're doing character modelling that you have really smooth, nice edge loops because that will affect the way that the animator can animate the model. If it's if it's not a nice, clean uh, model, a character model, you're going to have problems. Well, the animator's going to have problems. They're not going to be happy with you if you give them a model that's um, not quad, not yeah, that, that that's that's tried and not quad, with nice, smooth edge loops. Uh, like I was saying, it's less important when you do hard surface stuff, particularly if you do game stuff, because everything gets triangulated when you bring it into a game anyway. Sniper says, I totally forgot about that. Sophie, it's really good. I recommend it, guys. I can. It's free. It's good. If you don't want to spend money on ZBrush in, or, in, or any money on any, any software to do retopology, check out Instant Measures. It's made by a university... Uh, either in the UK or in the USA. I can't remember exactly where the uni is. Uh, they made it. They released it under the public license. Everybody can use it for free. Casualty Terp says, uh, that reminds me of a program called Sketch Retopo. I'm not familiar with that one. Um, Serban says, it also gets triangulated if you don't but you don't see it pretty much all render renders transform to triangles at render time true and particularly game engines any any game engine which uses rasterization which is pretty much all of them i mean it's getting it's changing with real time ray tracing now but anyway rasterization any model you bring into a game engine is going to be is going to be triangulated so it's it's easy to fall into the trap when you make really nice a nice quad mesh in your 3D program to a certain poly count. You import it into the, into a game engine and suddenly the poly count blows out. That's because it's 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 taking your one quad and, and splitting it into two tries. 
So it's doubling your poly count. And people can forget that when they bring their models in, if they're working to a model, uh, to a, a poly budget, which is why so it, it, can, it can be a good idea to triangulate your mesh ahead of time if your poly budget is that tight. So you know what, what, what you're going to get in for when you import it into your game engine. Uh, they're talking amongst themselves. Uh, well, you have, I've actually been glossing over your con casual, uh, conversation there because I don't want to sort of reply to, to, to you two that are talking amongst yourselves. But let me read what's going on now, now that you say that. Uh, Sniper says uh, I to cas casually derp that uh, I kind of like 3D Studio Max. Do you want to? Yeah, you did this. You're going to get a slap because you deserve a slap, Sniper Echo. You get the pill slap. But you, Sniper Echo, even though I'm not completely sure why I'm slapping you. <laughs> Uh, Serban says, uh, I meant for ray traces as well because a plane that a plane can be defined by three points. Uh, they use planes to calculate things like normals, uh, which is calculated on planes can have problems because three verts can be lying on a plane and the other one may not, which causes artifacts. If calculated on quads. That's interesting, Serban. I wasn't aware of that myself. I'm going to check that. I'm, I'm going to look up. I, I believe you. But Serban is saying that even ray tracing engines, um, when they come to render the image, triangulate the mesh. No, I wasn't aware of that. It's something new to me. Uh, but it is something I'm, I'm, going to I'm going to look into. Because, yeah, I didn't know about that. And I've been doing 3D for many, many years. Uh, I guess when you're doing a ray, ray, ray render, you don't really care. Not as much as you do when you uh, import models into a game, but yeah, that's news to me. I'll, I'll check that. I'll look into that. I'll look into that. Uh, but I guess that does make sense. Yeah, I'll check that out, Serban. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a read up on that. I'm just going to remove this um, selection from the edge there. Okay, let's let's try and do a quad camper, just chamfer on just the um, the edges along the side. I'm going to up it to three iterations. I'm going to pull back a little bit on the actual chamfer itself. We just want a, a bit of a smooth edge here because this is stone work. We never have a hard edge on stone. Uh, Serban says, my internet was laggy, but I wanted to say, did you try to select the full circular part and then use select similar? I uh, could try that. Sniper Girl, it's good to see you, Sniper Girl. How have you been? Are you well? Is everything going okay for you? I know you went through a bit of a rough patch, I think, at the end of last year. So I hope, I hope you're well, Sniper Girl. I hope you had a great Christmas and New Year. It's good to see you. Yes, I, I hope you had a great Christmas, Sniper Girl. Nine months. <laughs> Is this is, you? You've been a sub for me for a very long time too, which I do appreciate, Sniper Girl. So thank you for subbing to the channel. You are awesome as well. Beck sub this morning, which was great. And Android Lust is uh, how long have you been sub now, Android Lust? You've been on for a while. You, yeah, a year, Android Lust. You've been sub for over a year now. Wow. You guys are absolutely awesome. I'm blown away that you want to sub to my channel, and I really do appreciate it. So thank you. Android Lust says, hey, no, no. Snappy Girl says, uh, doing well overall. Had an interview at high voltage last week. Still hopeful. How about, how are you? I'm, I'm really well. Thanks for asking. Yep. I spent um, the Christmas New Year period visiting my sister and my brother and their kids, um, which was nice and good. I ate too much and went into a food coma like I was talking about to the guys at the beginning of the stream. Like you always overindulge at Christmas. It's allowed. Uh, and then I took the kids to Movie World on the Gold Coast, which was fun. They enjoyed that. So it's been good. Work is starting to get busy again now for me. It's starting to um, 
to pick up again. It quietened down at the end of last year and now it starts to pick up again. So looking forward to that. <laughs> Let's see, I, was, I try not to overwork myself and get sick like I did last year when they took away half my projects, remember? So I was getting sick and they freaked out. Uh, Sniper Girl says, got to show support for fellow artists, even when I can't be here as often as I'd like. Well, that's cool. And I do appreciate it, Sniper Girl. So thank you very much for subbing. You really are awesome. Um, and I'm glad to hear you're going well, that life is treating you well. Remember, I'm always here two, two, two days a week. So if you do want to pop in and say hello, you are always welcome. But like I say to you guys, it, you've got lives and if life gets in the way of watching me stream, then I completely understand that. That's not a problem. Uh, but I appreciate the support, Sniper Girl. <laughs> you remember Sniper Girl? I work myself to death. It's only because I like what I do so much and I want to do more and more and more. You know, I, I can't say no because each project is different and interesting. So I don't want to miss out on something that could be cool to work on. So I keep saying yes to everything. Uh, but, yeah, I did. I got, I got sick last year, and I can't do that again because the, the studio completely freaked out because they have deadlines, and even though it's not just me generally that works on a project, there are other designers in the studio. We all work on projects together. Uh, if one person can't, if one person falls out of the group, then that can really affect the timeline. So, <laughs> so work said to me, no, we're taking away half the stuff you were working on. It's too much, which is cool. I mean, some companies would just say work harder, work longer. Uh, but, but the studio I work for, they are really good. They treat their staff really well. You know that feeling, Sniper Girl? Yeah, but don't we all? Like, I've worked for studios where they've, it's been like slave labor. They want you to work 24-7 if, if you could, and they don't care. Um, but generally I try and avoid those studios or, or move away from them as quickly as I can. Uh, Sniper Girl says a person getting sick affects the timeline. No, you never would have thought, would you, Sniper Girl? One person dropping off the project, how can that affect the timeline? Which is... You know, there's two bugbears of mine. Let's talk studios for a minute. Two bugbears. When you work for a studio that think that, uh, what, what's the word? I want to be diplomatic here. You work for a studio where they value the timeline more than the quality of the work. So basically uh, faster and cheaper. That's That's a big red flag for me because, you know, a studio is not going to survive very long on that strategy. Uh, faster and cheaper leads to a race to the bottom and generally the quality of the work goes down with it. So faster, cheaper, don't like it. Uh, and studios that think that they can work their staff 24-7 and it won't affect them. Well, basically the way I think of things is I would never ask somebody to do something that I wouldn't be prepared to do myself. Now that comes from many years of me being a in management as well. So if I wouldn't do it, I won't ask someone else to do it. If I, if, if I think it's it's crap and it, it's it, the timeline is too short or the work is too difficult for the person or, or, or just too difficult in general, then I won't ask someone else to do it. So if I, if I wouldn't do it, I won't ask someone else to do it. I think that's the best way to manage people. You know, you, you know, you treat people well, they'll give you good work. You treat people like crap, they're going to give you crap work. It's as simple as that. And studios sometimes don't get that. Hey, Yuri, good to you. Euro, sorry. Euro, good to see you, Euro. How are you? It's good to see all you guys and girls. I haven't seen you for ages, half of you. It's good to see you, Euro. Hope you're well. Hope you had a good Christmas and New Year. So, yeah, no, it is good to see all you guys and girls. It's been a while. For some, I haven't seen some of you for ages. You don't love me anymore, do you? <laughs> That's cool. Um, okay, so we did the edges. These circles, wow. It's always something that's going to be a pain for me to select, isn't there? Um, I'm just going to collapse the stack here. Actually, I'm not going to collapse the stack. I'm going to do an edit poly on top of the stack. 
just in case I need to make some changes. Uh, Euro says, I'm okay. You've been sick all Christmas, so that sucked. Well, that does suck. It sucks to be sick over Christmas and New Year. It's the worst time of the year to be sick. I guess you can't help when you get sick, though. Um, that's not good. Euro, uh, I hope you're well better. Oh, I hope you're better now. Uh, Serban says, try the select similar. It generally works. What do you mean select similar? Sniper says, super excited for you, Sniper Girl, fingers crossed. Yeah, good, actually, I completely forgot to skip over that. Sorry, Sniper Girl. Yeah, good. Uh, wish you luck with the interview, uh, with the job as well. It would be cool. You must pop back and let us know how you go. Uh, but uh, I'm sure you'll, you'll, you know, I've seen your work. Your work is cool, is great. So um, I'm sure you'll, you know, you're in with a really good chance, I'm sure. Um, never get discouraged, though, guys and girls, if you don't get the job that you want. There's always another job. Always another studio. It sucks, but that happens. But if you get it, it amazing, amazing. Yes, they do keep us updated, though. From what they're saying, Sniper Girl says uh, they're hiring a lot of people. They must have a big project on. It is awesome. And Sniper Echo says, I do wish you, wish you luck, Sniper Girl. I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. And let us know how you do get on. It's a big project, really not allowed to say. No, that's cool. Again, I know about NDAs and stuff, and you can't talk about what you work on. I, that's the reason I can't show the stuff I work on at work here on Twitch, because uh, <laughs> the studio would be apoplectic. They, they go into meltdown, because we sign all sorts of documents and contracts with, with our clients where we can't discuss what we're working on or talk about, show what we're working on. So if, for the studio to find out that I was broadcasting it to the world on Twitch, they would be apoplectic. Man, they go up their brain. They've already warned me because I did go in and ask for you guys because you guys wanted me to show you some stuff I do at work. Uh, but they said no. <laughs> I tried. Uh, Euro says there's a select similar tool in the poly tools. Can't recall. Oh, yeah, I'm looking in. Oh, you're talking about. Yeah, you, yeah I turned my ribbon off. <laughs> I, know, I know what you're talking about. Um, Sniper Girl says it's going well, made in asphalt material and Quixel mixer for the parking lot. Uh, needed a break in Maya. Uh, Remember, guys and girls, a lot of the people on that pop into my channel are 3D people or art, art people themselves, so they do have ArtStation uh, accounts. I have an ArtStation account now with actually some images in it. I opened my ArtStation account two years ago and never did anything with it, but uh, this month I've updated it with a couple of, with some images, so you can check my ArtStation out as well. If you're not sure where, it, it's ArtStation slash Bill Does 3D. You can go to my website and get a link from there as well. Uh, Euro says, I spent months last year making assets for an indie, all NDA'd up, so couldn't stream anything. Uh, I know how that goes, Phil. Yeah, it's a pain, isn't it? You, particularly because you can be working on something really cool that you'd love to show, um, show off, but you can't. NDAs do suck, but they're a necessary evil. Companies don't want their, their work stolen or they don't want it to get to the media before they're ready to talk about it, all that sort of stuff. All sorts of reasons, but why NDAs are important. But they're a pain. Particularly when you want to show the stuff you're working on. And of course, there's some stuff that you can never show. Uh, the studio I've worked at, I work at, and ones I've worked at in the past, have done work for the military. Uh, and in that case, you need um, you can't do the work unless you've got a security clearance. So you have to get a security clearance. 
which can take a while and costs a fortune, but the company generally pays for that. Um, and even after you've finished the job, you can't show the work that you did. <laughs> so that's even more of a pain. It's worse than an NDA. It's an NDA plus you can never show anyone what you've done. Uh, again, military getting into simulation work, a lot of, I can talk about this sort of general, general stuff. They're getting into a lot of simulation work, so they need artists, designers, 3D people to create these simulations. Um, and that's the sort of stuff you just can never show anyone, unfortunately. Otherwise, they'll lock you up and throw away the key. They won't sue you, they'll lock you up. Uh, so I get where you're coming from, Euro. Uh, yes, I'm pretty, yes, yes, you're related to post a link, Sniper Girl, for sure. You're a sub, so you can post links in uh, in Twitch chat and on Discord. Go for it, Sniper Girl. Sorry, I just saw the message. You can post links. Yes, NDA sucks, Sniper Echo says. Yep, uh, Sniper says I did a train for a Muslim contract, I'm assuming. That's about all I can say. Uh, what's the best terrain I ever did? Was the best terrain you ever did? <laughs> it's always the way. The best work you ever do is the stuff you can ever show. How am I going to do this? What's the easiest way to do this? Yeah, I turn off my ribbon. I find having the ribbon shown in Max is a pain. I really don't like it there. I like more screen space and less ribbon that I generally never use. A sniper says, oh, military, sorry, I thought you said Muslim. <laughs> My apologies to all our Muslim friends. Military simulation, yeah, I've done, I've done stuff with the military as well. Well, the studios I've worked at have done stuff with the military. But I can't show. I can't put in my portfolio. All I can do, the best I can do is when I go for a job interview is say, yes, I have security clearance and, uh, yes, I've done work for, for the Defence Department. Sniper Girl says, here's why I'm working. Yep. Oh, cool. Let's have a look at what Sniper Girl is working on. Because you guys know how much I love looking at the stuff you make. Why don't you do this to me? I'm just checking it out. So this is uh, Sniper Girl, the stuff, something Sniper Girl is working on. So, uh, you beat some assets having a rough texture made. Rapidly, I'm waiting on this to be done by the end of the week. <laughs> Going to have a lot of sleepless nights there. Yeah, I know that feeling, Sniper Girl. Looking cool. Very cool. So we have a sign here. We have a gas station, I'm assuming, here. Cool. <laughs> I love that filled up. <laughs> I love it, Sniper Girl. Love it, love it, love it. It looks really good. It's coming along nicely. Nice clean topology. <laughs> so we girls have some other images on previous posts. Okay. Oh, okay. I see what's nice, nice, nice. Nice soft edge here, uh, chamfered edge, not a hard edge, which is good. I like the texturing work as well. Uh, I like the colour scheme as well. It's that real 50s sort of colour scheme, the green. Looking cool. Uh, even down to the, the detailing work here with the chain work. It's very cool. Nice. Is this the end? Wow, four bucks for a pizza, that's cheap. They cost about 20 bucks in this country. Well, nowadays anyway. And we're looking at the texture maps here, the UV map. Nice. 
good use of the UV space, not you're making as much use of it as you possibly can. I'm assuming it won't let me go any further. And here we have like an occlusion render. Again, nice detailing here on the uh, petrol pumps. <clears throat> oh, I'm just going to rub my eye here. It's a bit itchy. <coughs> and I can't do it through the glass. <laughs> and get a drink because I've got a bit of a tickle in my throat now. Uh, Sniper is complimenting Euro on his weapon creation skills. Is Kiori working on a weapon at the moment? Again, Kiori is another streamer who streams on Twitch. You guys could, should check his channel out as well. Uh, he's a cool guy. He makes some really, really good stuff. He's really talented. Um, particularly if you like guns, by the sound of it. You guys know I don't model guns. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, cool. I see you posted a link, Serban. I will check that out in two seconds as well. Yeah, Android Lost says I like the gas station's name. Yeah, I do too. I think it's very cool. Can't go wrong with Phil. Uh, it's, it's very clever too. Uh, a clever word use as well. Yeah, it looks cool. There's so many clever words you can use with Phil in the title. Yeah, that, that looks really good. Um, it's not a go, Ashley. I like the texturing work. I like the, the, that green 50s look colour. Uh, Euro says, I probably spend as long researching and collecting references as modelling when it comes to weapons. Well, it's really important to, to, to work to reference uh, it can really help you get the thing look, looking right. Uh, I see that, uh, I don't know if Smurfberry's here today, but it was Smurfberry bar Smurfberry's bar barbecue's birthday yesterday. So again, happy birthday for yesterday. He was in the stream. We did wish him happy birthday yesterday. Uh, but I see that a few weeks ago or a week or two ago, he posted on the Discord server how when you do a Google search for images, Google shows you stuff that isn't related to what your search was. And you guys were talking about how the, the algorithm is, is, is missing the mark a little bit on Google at the moment. Uh, which is very true, but yeah, Google Google image search for um, reference stuff is really handy. I use it all the time if I'm making something that I don't have visual reference for. So I get where you're coming from, Euro. Uh, Serban says, manage to post your portfolio. Yes, I see that. I will check that out right now. Uh, Sniper Girl says, glad you guys like it. It's an older project that I stopped working on. You can't wait till it's done. Oh, that's no, no way to think of a beloved project you're working on, Sniper Girl. You should be excited to return to it. Although, the, I, I have to admit, there are, I've started some models that I haven't wanted to finish it as well. So I, I get it. I do get it. I like your, um, your banner as well, actually. I like that model. I love furniture because I work with furniture all day doing Archbiz stuff, so I love furniture. I love antique furniture in, in real life as well. It's just, you know, something I like. <laughs> I like the, that as well, the design and the uh, texturing. It looks really cool. And uh, let's have a look at uh, Serban's portfolio because I want to check out your portfolio. Okay, now, oh, very nice. I'm just waiting for it to load in. Have you been using Substance Painter to do your texturing, Serban? I'm just curious. Uh, it's really nice texturing work. I love the, um, the detailing you put into the model, the distressing you've done in the texture, in the paint texture. It's a really interesting model too. What is it? This is one of the main assets I worked on during DNEG. I truly improved my ability to work in the pipeline. 
Uh, Clarissa Mari and Substance Painter. Yep. Yep, it looks really cool. Really cool. Oh, I see. It's a robot. Nice. Very nice. I love the design of the model. And like I said, the texturing work is, uh, I can't fault it either. It looks great. Beautiful work. Let's just have a quick look at the video. Looks great. Really nice. Beautiful, beautiful work. Great design too. Showing in a few different HDR environments, which is cool. You're using Substance and Mari? Yep, that's, that's the workflow I'm going to be doing for our, our garden terrace as well. We will use both Substance Painter and Mari. That looks amazing now. I love the model. I love the texturing. Looks really, really cool. Just going to have a quick look through the rest of your portfolio here. Again, beautiful work. Really nice. I love the model. I love the composition. And again, I like the texturing. It's very nice. And again, that really interesting um, thing to do for your portfolio, just a, a, a still life composition like this. You know, you could, it could be a, a vase of flowers. It could be this type of thing. It's something that's not a car or a gun. Please, people, please don't fill your portfolio full of cars and guns. Just anything interesting and unique or like this is amazing, and I love it. Love it. Okay, we have uh, a jet aircraft here, which is cool. Nice uh, skin shader here on this model. Stylized character model, which is really cool. We've got some cloth going on here. Looks very nice. You've got a nice portfolio. I like the uh, the layout of the portfolio as well. The presentation, I should say. Nice and clean. The website's nice and clean. Nice work, Servan. Really nice. Yeah, he, as Android does says, you do have some crazy good work. Your, your work is beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, Sniper says to Euro, he, he, uh, he clearly hasn't seen your gun, so don't listen to him. <laughs> and look, guys, I'm not saying don't model a gun or don't model a car or two or three if you want. Just don't don't pack your portfolio full of cars and guns. It's just don't do it. You want to show that you're 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 a well-rounded person to a studio uh, that, that you can do more than just cars and guns. You know, it's important. You're going to be working with other adults and they want to know that you're you're an adult and you, you, there's more range to you than just a car or a gun. That's my point. Show them that you're a nice, well-rounded person and show them a variety of different things. It gives them more confidence that you can make other stuff as well. That's, that's really what I'm getting at. Sniper Echo is just being cheeky and he's going to get another slap if he's not careful. Um, Servan says, I think that still like project uh, are so fun and nice to add to it. Yeah, I agree. And that nice to add to portfolio based on my reviews I got, that was the main thing. Uh, they liked my portfolio. Yeah, again, I can see why because it, it's a really, it's not something you see people putting in their portfolio a lot and it's really effective. It looks amazing. It's a different type of image to show uh, a potential employer. Uh, so I would agree 100%. I think spot on as far as the choice of the uh, still life goes and the way you've rendered it out, the, the way you've textured it, it's, it looks perfect. I love it. Love it. Love it. The hop And again, the, the, the layout for your website is nice and clean as well, which is cool. Um, but don't think, I, I have my own website as well, but don't think you need a website. You can go to ArtStation, set up a, 
an ArtStation account and show your work through ArtStation. You don't have to spend any money setting up a website. Oh, but it's a good thing to do anyway. It, eventually, you should have your own website. Uh, Snappy Girl says, so I just have cars and guns only. No, that's not what I'm saying, Sniper Girl. I'm... You get the stink eye, Sniper Girl. That is not what I'm saying. I'm not saying just have cars and guns. That's the opposite to what I'm saying. And you know it. <laughs> so cheeky. All of you cheeky. That was not what I said, Sniper Echo. All them snipers getting a slap, that's right. Sniper girl, sniper echo, you, you're both going to get a slap. If only you had more. <laughs> uh, sniper girl says, deletes all of my non-cars and non guns. Don't, don't delete them all either. I'm not saying don't have any. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying don't, don't, don't put words into my mouth. You guys and girls, don't put words into my mouth. I'm not saying not have any, not, don't have any. By all means, have a, gar, a car or two and a gun or two in your portfolio. If that's what you want, then that's fine. Uh, don't stuff it full of cars and guns. That's what I'm saying. Come on. Come on. Don't put words into my mouth here. <laughs> you know what? I'm getting sick of um, doing this edging. I really am. So sick. Of it. It's got to be an easier way for me to do this. All that great work lost, Sniper Echo was saying. The NRA will not be happy. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, the NRA have too much power, I think. No, but I, I know you Americans like your, gar, your guns, so I don't want to uh, piss off my American audience, but the NRA, I think, have a lot to answer for in the US. Android Lust says, uh, deleting guns in America is un-American. It certainly is, yes. <laughs> sniper says, did he just call me an American? No, you're not an American, Sniper Echo. You don't, you, you don't have the NRA in Ireland, do you, though? Know? It's only an American thing, isn't it? We don't have it in this country. We have other gun lobbies, but not the NRA, I don't think. I could be wrong again. You guys know I'm not up on guns, but. I do know we have lobby groups in this country, but we, we don't allow guns. Our citizens can't carry guns around like you can in the US. It's against the law. And that's why we don't get shot all the time. I'm not saying that people can't get illegal guns in this country. They can and they do. But um, it's hard to get a gun. National Redneck Association, right? Sniper Girl says, yeah, that's right. Red National Red, I like that. National Redneck Association. You know, it's in your constitution. That's what they keep bringing up every time that they try and reduce the amount of guns in the US. So it's in our constitution. It's our right to protect ourselves. It's true. It is in your constitution. It's true. You have that right. But that doesn't mean your constitution can't be changed. If you really, really want it, change your constitution. Lobby your um, government to change your constitution. Uh... Andrew Lost says, I thought the NRA was only an American thing. Yeah, I thought it was too. Sniper says, what do you mean you know I'm not an American? I know you're not an American. I know you're not an American, Sniper Echo. Not unless you moved since the last time um, we were talking. I'm just going to turn off his places here. We do have another option we could probably use. We could probably try and do a mesh smooth or a turbo smooth. Let's see what, we'll, what that gives us. 
uh, Serban says most countries have a weapon policy that can have pistol, but you cannot have a dam, uh, a dam M4 in your house. Those weapons are not made for self-defense. No, well, that's right. Automatic machine guns are not a self-defense item. That's for mass killing. And to say that you need one for self-defense is bullshit. Anytime you should be carrying a, a semi-automatic machine gun as if you're in war. Well, not because you want one to shoot and play around with. Sorry, that's just, that's just crap. Uh, Andrew Lust says, only in America you can have M uh, M4s in your house. Yeah. yeah. Sniper Echo says, we have a potato. Only potatoes. <laughs> oh, wow. This in your own culture there. Come on. Come on. Uh, Sniper Girl says, honestly, I agree with you. That's with me being an American. Yeah, again, I, I, that my opinion is people shouldn't carry guns. You just, you shouldn't need a gun. If you've got a good police force, you don't need a gun. It, it, the chances of somebody using the gun against you are greater than anything, than you protecting yourself if you're in danger. Um, you should, so I don't want anyone to carry guns. I think they're just, they're dangerous, they're deadly. They're unnecessary, unless you're a member of um, the police or the army or something like that. You don't need them. Don't have them. Uh, and and it, you see how many people get shot every year in the U.S. You see these terrible school shootings that happen in the U.S. Um, guns are more trouble than they're worth. Oh, Snipe says, why is that funny? Euro says, without getting too political, educating people along the tighter controls on who can purchase a weapon, psych evaluation, medical checks, etc., would cut a lot of the bad apples out of the equation. Well, that's true too. But see, it's, it, the NRA lobby Congress or lobby senators to relax all those sort of laws so that they can sell more guns. I mean, that's what they want. <laughs> you know, these they, they want more gun sales. They don't want fewer. So... Yeah, but you're right. If they, if they made people have proper medical checks and proper waiting periods as well, uh, then I'm sure it would go a long way to improve the gun problem in the US. But if it was me, I'd just get rid of them all. If I was in charge over there, I'd tell you what, you wouldn't have no guns. They would be gone. No, it's easy said, I know. I mean, I'm sure that they've tried. There, there have been politicians in the US that have tried, tried really hard. But the NRA is just too powerful. Uh, Serban says, I think that everyone knows that even in there, but just like cigarettes that are proven to damage more than marijuana, they can't, they can't stop it because the industry grew too much and produces too many dollars. Well, in this country, I don't know if you're aware, but we're the, we were the first country to put those really graphic warnings on cigarette packets about how, how it kills you. Um, so plain cigarette packets with just really big pictures of horrible things to discourage people from smoking. And the government in this country taxes cigarettes at a huge tax amount. It's like, again, I don't smoke, but it's about 25 or 30% tax on cigarettes. So they're really, really expensive. A packet of 25 cigarettes in this country costs about close to $30, I think. That's Australian dollars. So the government are trying to make it more, too expensive for people to smoke which is a good thing because they're bad for you. And this is coming from somebody that used to be a smoker. Um, again, in my wild child days when I was younger that I've told you guys and girls about, uh, I, I used to smoke back then in my 20s. Uh, I haven't smoked for donkey's years now, over a decade. Uh, so, yeah, I, I can't stand smokers now. It stinks. I hate the smell of cigarettes. Even if I'm walking along the street and somebody's smoking near me in open air, I can smell it. It's awful, awful. Not to mention the stains you get on your fingers and your hair. Ugh. Gross, it's gross. 
Uh, but uh, people are addicted to it, and it's a very nicotine is a very addictive um, substance. So it's a poison. Remember that, guys and girls, if you're smokers, nicotine is a poison. It's officially classed as a poison. So you're poisoning yourself by smoking. Not to mention all the other crap that's in cigarettes, like tar and God knows what else. Uh, so yeah, the government have gone a long way to serve and to try and block stop people smoking in this country. Sniper Girl says, I'm okay with home use, I'm okay with gun ranges and such, against people just carrying them out in public. Which is a scary thought to me as an Australian, to know that I could be walking along the street and the person in front of me could be carrying a gun. That just freaks me out. And it would freak me out if I lived in the US. I know I'm safe in this country because, like I said, we're not allowed to carry guns. Uh, but the thought of just being able, walking along the street and knowing somebody could be carrying a gun uh, freaks me out. But I don't even think pe people should have them in their home for protection. But that's just me. That's my opinion. You guys have your own. That's fine. I'm not forcing my opinion on you. Don't you force yours on me. <laughs> we respect everyone's opinion. Because uh, I get that some people like their guns. I get it. Um, Android Lost says, sometimes I don't think the Amer that America is that concerned with... Uh, Psych evaluations, or maybe I should say afford, should say affordable. Uh, Sniper says potatoes are toe only answer. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it, Sniper Echo. And we all love potatoes. I mean, potato is my favourite vegetable. Love potatoes, baked, mashed, fried, potato chips. Love them all. Love them. Potato is the best thing to come out of Ireland. No, I shouldn't say that. It's one of the best things to come out of Ireland. Let's get it. Let's get it right. Let's not be insulting. Uh, and besides which, don't they make vodka out of potato? Again, I'm, I'm not being up on my spirits at the moment, but yeah. Snappy Girl says, yeah, the NRA constantly fight an, uh, against more regulation, against uh, metal background checks, mental background checks. Yeah, I know. It's the NRA. Like I said, they want to sell more guns. That's what they, you know, that's the reason they're doing it. Don't you crash on me, Max. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't you dare. Okay. It's going to remove that mesh smooth. Um, Neuro says, we've had medical evaluations in the UK for some time, and that's just for obtaining a license to own any weapons. Pretty strict here. Yeah, it's the same in this country. Uh, farmers in this country can own a gun. Uh, they have to jump through a huge amount of hoops to do it. Uh, it's because farmers need to shoot wildlife like um, dingoes or kangaroos. If, if they're infringing on their farm, farmers have the right to shoot them. So farmers can carry a gun, but they've got to go through a lot of regulation. There's a really long waiting period, um, and they have to have all these checks. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not saying that no one in, in this country carries a gun because farmers do. Some farmers do, not all. And that's just because they need it for their own, to protect their livestock and stuff like that. So I'm not saying guns don't have their use, and but I prefer if no one carried a gun. Andrew Doss says, $30, that's the worst, that's worse than uh, New York prices. Yeah, no, they made it that way. This, it, the government in this country set out to make sure it would be as expensive as possible to stop people from smoking because it was costing the government a lot in um, – because we have free medical care in this country. I don't know if you still have it in the United States or if um, Mr. Trump has done away with it, but um, Obamacare, I think they were calling it. We have free Medicare in this country, so free medical care um, if you want it. And it was costing the government huge amounts of money and people you know, like – getting cancer and lung cancer and all that sort of stuff, not to mention other cancers throughout the body from smoking. So the government set out to make sure it was going to be as expensive as possible to discourage as many people as possible from smoking so that their uh, medical bill, the government's medical bill for people would be lower in the long run. That's the reason the government did it. Uh, so, yeah. And the people that just can't stop smoking, well, they're going to pay the high price $30 a packet of cigarettes and the government gets a huge whack of that in tax anyway. So it's a win-win for the government. 
Uh, Sniper says we make. Uh, I don't know, what's that word? Puritan. But what is that? <laughs> uh, Sniper says, side note, there is no select similar in Maxwell. Yeah, well, I, I can't find this select similar that you guys are talking about. It may be in the um, model, modeling tools that come with part of the ribbon, which I turn off. Uh, Euro says, yeah, that's why I have my license in firearms, vermin control on my uncle's farm. Yeah, farmers need can need, need a rifle to uh, to protect the, the actual wildlife, the, to protect the farm. <laughs> uh, Serban says, I just, I, I just think you need a real person to get a gun and they should make it so hard that you have to go through a lot of struggle to get it so that they're, they're sure you really need it. America will regulate with time. I'm sure they will. Uh, I'm sure they're smart people, but it won't happen overnight. It's people expect after a school shooting. Well, that's true too, and something we need to keep in mind, that um, these things are much easier said than done. Uh, it's easy for us to sit here and say, well, why don't they just regulate? You know, Why don't they just make it so they can't have guns? It's, a, it's more difficult than, than just saying that. And I, like you say, Sir Ben, I'm sure I've um, given enough time eventually. They'll get there. They'll be like the rest of the world in the US where not everyone will have to carry a gun. It will happen. I have faith. I think we might budget just by doing a... Um, by doing a mesh smooth or turbo smooth, that'll soften up the edges for me a bit anyway. It saves me getting in there, even with mesh select and or select similar and doing it by hand. I'll, 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 I'll cheat and do it this way. Uh, but what I'm going to do a pro optimize on this model though because it's really high poly now with, with the uh, turbo smooth. So I'm going to collapse the stack and I'm just going to do a quick uh, optimization on it. We don't need to keep textures or anything because we haven't textured it up. Uh, now you're Russian. Uh, oh, you're Putin. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Putin. Sniper Girl says, um, US healthcare sucks, even in the heights of the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. We had 45,000 people die each year because they can't afford healthcare. That is a crime, an absolute crime. Uh, and again, uh, I've, I've, I've seen Michael Moore's documentaries uh, about particularly the ones on healthcare. It, it, some of the things that companies get up to in the United States just staggers me. Like he was talking about a guy whose whose company who, whose company he worked for took out an insurance policy insurance policy on him dying because he had cancer or something. So that and didn't tell him. So if he died, then the company that he worked for would get a huge payout from the insurance company. Things like that. that that's just immoral. Immoral. Um. And I've heard horror stories about the healthcare system in the US. So I was disappointed to hear that um, Mr. Trump wanted to roll back Obamacare. I thought they were heading in the right direction, but yeah, I guess these uh, large healthcare funds make a lot of money from people getting private health cover, don't they? Because like they do in this country, we have private health cover too, as well as free Medicare, free medical cover. If you want, you can get private health cover in this country, but you have to pay for it. But you don't need it. <laughs> Serban says it's in the ribbon. Yeah, I th I'm sure. I'm sure it is. It's in the ribbon. Normally, when you first install Max, you get a ribbon here, which I turn off because, like I said, I like more real estate. I don't ever use the ribbon usually. Uh, Snappy Girl says that's according to the, to Harvard to a Harvard study, and that's just staggering. Forty five thousand people dying each year because they can't afford health care. We're in the twenty first century. The United States is the richest country on the planet and 45,000 of your citizens are dying every year, if that is correct, because they can't afford health cover. That's just staggering, staggeringly bad and depressing, incredibly depressing. Terrible, terrible, terrible.
How low can I go? I think one one percent is probably a bit too low. Let's try two percent again. I think we can get away with two percent. Okay, let's collapse our stack again now that we've got it back down to a more manageable poly count. Uh, again, I'm just going to do another auto smooth on it. That should be good. Let's jump out of our sub object mode. That'll work for what we want. Uh, now we haven't UV mapped these these pieces up, so let's just do that quickly. The um, the columns, I'm pretty sure we've done the UV mapping on. Yes, let me just do an unwrap on this one and check it. Yep, the UV map, so that's good. Uh, but I don't know if we did these or not. No, we haven't done these, so I'm just going to do a collapse on the stack here. Uh, and we can copy the UV map between the other four because it's the same uh, piece of geometry. Uh, Servan says edge mode, ribbon, modeling, modified bot. Yeah, I, 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 get, I know what you're talking about, Servan. Yeah. Sniper, Epicus, it's amazing how the richest country in the world can't make healthcare affordable. I agree. Sniper Girl says, uh, yeah, agreed. Here's the info on the study itself. It's one of the uh, many reasons I do political activism. Well, good for you, Sniper Girl. <coughs> If I was over there, I'd be joining you. There's a lot that goes on in this country that the government do that I don't agree with as well. Uh, and any time I can voice my displeasure, I do. Because if you don't, if you don't watch them, these governments, regardless of what country you're living in, you got to watch them like a hawk. Don't think that they've got your best interests at heart, because they don't. They do not have your best interests at heart at all. And I don't care if you live in Australia, America. Russia, Ireland, anywhere in the world, all governments behave the same way and they all behave badly. If they, if you, if you let them get away with it, they will. So don't let them get away with it. Uh, let's try our lovely automatic unwrap tools here that we have in Ryzen UV. <laughs> it did unwrap it, but that's a bad. That's that's not what we want. Let's just undo that. Uh, let's try the box ma mapping method. I think that'll be better. Let's throw down a checker pattern to check it. And that looks good. This is why I love this program. I hate um, I hate UV mapping. It's one of the worst things about doing 3D modeling. So anytime I can find a piece of software that will do it for me quickly, easily, I'm all for it. Uh, so that's why I like Ryzen UV. I'm not sure what's going on there. <laughs> Max is having a fit. Uh, just let me pause that so you guys don't have to hear it. I've got to work out why it's doing it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> wow. I uh, don't know what went on there. Uh, you can see too it's... Um, it's created a duplicate. Don't know why it did that. That's, that's really strange. You agree, Snappy Girl? Good. Andrew Lust says, some people are so afraid of going to the uh, doctor or the hospital because they're afraid of the uh, medical debt. And it can be incredibly expensive. Like, I, I, I get why people are, um, are afraid because it's incredibly, it can become incredibly expensive. It didn't actually send that through. I don't know why that was. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do a reset on the X form for this piece of geometry. Just in case there's some sort of problem there. Hang on. No, it's not a poly. That's fine. I'm just going to go into uh, isolation mode here. Edit poly. That's all good. But you are right, Android Lust uh, can get incredibly expensive depending on what the medical problem is. Uh, Snappy Girl says, love that first UV map. Yeah, we, it, it wouldn't have worked well for what we wanted to do, though. We would have got some stretching happening through the sides because it's a box. That was more like a pelt map, which is better for an organic shape. Snappy Girl says, uh, Android Lust, there are women in New York that got 
pinned by a subway that was screaming for people not to call an ambulance due to their insurance sucking. That sucks. And that's, that's terrible. Uh, Yuri says, I'm afraid of Mama Said's progress bar <laughs> taking, <laughs> taking all night to hit 100%. That is shocking, Sniper Girl. That is absolutely shocking. Now, there's something weird going on here. I'm just going to cheer. I wonder if it's because it's part of a, a group. Let me just, um, let me ungroup this. Because grouping can sometimes cause all sorts of, um, problems in Max for occasionally for some modifiers. So I'm going to ungroup it. And, uh, let's have a look. Yeah, now, see, now it will let me reset the selected X form. And that could have been the problem with um, Ryzen UV as well, the fact that we were working with a grouped object. So let's do it again. I'm just going to collapse the stack there and I'm going to send this over to Ryzen. And we're going to unfold it again. Check it. It's fine. Send it back. Okay, I didn't get that ding, 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 ding constantly happening, and it's put it back in its spot, so that's fine. Oh uh, yeah, the fact that it was a problem because the model was grouped. So just be aware of that if you're a Max user and you sometimes having a grouped object can cause problems for some modifiers. Uh, Serban says bad things happen in America, but but in the same time, a lot of other good ones happen there. So I think, it, yeah, again, I'm sure they will solve their problems. America is a big country full, of, like you said, full of a lot of a very lot of smart people. They'll sort it all out in the end. Eventually, I'm sure they will. Um, it'll just take them a while. Euro says Max does when it renders. What are we talking about? Andrew Lust says, not when optimizing. <laughs> Kaleva and Andrew, we were talking, this is something that happened yesterday when we were doing a pro-optimize. You are correct there, um, um, Android Lust. It doesn't have a progress bar when it's optimizing, which, um, which is unfortunate. Snowbigil says, oh, wow, that UV map is amazing. Euro says, you can shift click your edges and if you want to quickly select loops in Max, shift click. Shift click. Shift click. Let me have a look. Uh, I'm just going to go back into Edge Mode. I'm, I'm just for science, for science. Oh, again, this is another really high poly mesh. <laughs> Shift clicking selects everything though. Uh, yeah, I can, I can shift click. But that, that selects my entire, like, you know, I can just do that if I want to do it that way. Oh, he's talking about actually having to go into the modifier and do it. Yes, that does work, but it, it won't, wouldn't have solved the problem we had with that um, mesh because it selects everything. Okay, well, let's try it again. Needs to be an edge mode in edit poly. But let, let's just choose a piece of geometry that's maybe a little bit lower. Just be quicker and easier. Yeah, again, no. It's, you are correct, it, it is sort of, well, it, it doesn't work on everything by the look of it either. It, it'll work on my edge loops here, right? right? Am I hitting the wrong button? I, I see what you mean, it sort of automatically selects them. Yeah, that, that's cool. Actually, yep, that is cool. 
So we still would have had to have gone around and do it manually though. Let's still add something for me to keep in mind. Well, let's turn edge faces off there. We don't want to see all that. Yep, that's cool. I'll keep that in mind, Euro. Shift click. Sniper Girl says, uh, it depends, depends on if money has ever gotten out of politics. There was a study that showed that there were um, an obligatory, there were an oligarchy with majority of the decisions that Congress, Senate makes benefiting those that donate to them. That's all, We have that problem in this country as well. We get companies, businesses donating to political parties more so than individuals. It's actually against the law in this country to for for a politician to be uh, to 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 receive gifts, either money or or any sort of gift from the general public or from business. But that doesn't stop business to like donating to a political party. And when they do that, they do that so that they get to the ear of the politician, maybe the the Prime Minister in this country and say, oh, we, we'd like to do this, change the law for us. So I, I get where you're coming from. It's a, it's a pro real problem in politics. Um, people not looking out for, for the good of the nation, for the country, but only looking out for their own well-being. And I don't know how you stop that, apart from maybe not voting in people that have questionable moral ethics to begin with. In, into your government offices. Because uh, in this country, a lot of our politicians are ex-lawyers. You know, we all know we can't trust them. Oh, I'm going to get hate from lawyers now. But yeah, they're all, they're all, they all come from a law background. Um, and that doesn't help anyone. So yeah, so they, they tend to, uh, they, they, they tend to only do things that benefit themselves, and that's not for the good of the nation or the country, just for their own good. So what I'm going to do here is it's not letting me copy the UVs across, and I have a feeling that's because the front is wider than the sides, so I should be able to copy it across to the one at the back here. But we may just have to UV map the sides separately, which is because we're using that program, it's no big deal. It does it quickly automatically. So I'm going to paste that UV shell on. No, it won't even let me do it for the back. Okay. No problem. You want to be difficult, you can be difficult. Let's send it over and quickly UV map it. You see how quickly it does it, so it's no big deal. Uh, it, it means we won't be able to reuse the texture for that, but we probably can't reuse the texture because they're all too close to each other anyway. So we couldn't use this, the texture from this one on this one because they're too near each other. We have to, we'd have to use unique looking textures anyway. Okay, let's send this one over. And last but not least, the one over here. Oh, no, it needs to be an edit poly though, so I've got to collapse my stack. Uh, Sniper Girl says, so they're all paid liars. That's exactly right. That's what they are. Let's not let's not say all, because some of them are some of them are good. Not all of them are like that. Let's not tar everybody with the same brush. Uh, we do have a lot of good ones as well. I'm sure that's the same in every country in the world. But we do have some bad ones and some that are only interested in their own well-being and not the well-being of everybody else or of the country anyway. Uh, so I don't want to say they're all like that, but yeah, we do have some good ones. I'm just going to do a quick save here because um, I'm, I'm going to do an incremental save, save as well because I don't trust these programs. <laughs> Max has been pretty good, but Max does occasionally decide to crash. Generally, it's, it's good, but sometimes it will. And because I had to turn all day save off, I have to remember to save manually. So before I start doing too much more, I'm going to start uh, just doing some saves here.
again. That's nice and clean. We can send that back. So yes, I do recommend this program if you hate UV mapping and you want it to, you want something that will do it auto magically for you. It's a great piece of software. Uh, you can lease it if you don't want to buy it. It's not overly expensive. I mean, you know, it's it's about a hundred dollars I think for memory. Uh, but if you don't want to buy it, you can just rent it for however long you need it for whatever project you're doing. And you can see how quickly it UV maps up our object. Snowball says, "Sorry, was intended as a lawyer joke." <laughs> I get, it. I get it. Took me a while. Um, Phil, Phil's a bit slow. You know, Phil. Phil is a bit slow. That's just a visual artifact inside of the engine here. It's not actually a problem with the model. Uh, we'll double check it. We'll, go, we'll jump back into Max and I'll have a look at it, but I'm sure that's just a visual problem inside of the uh, program here. Actually, I have run into this before. Uh, remember when we were working on the um, the last garden terrace thing, I think we had this problem. And I found the problem is caused not by the model, but by the plugin that takes the program between the two versions, between Max and this software. Uh, and I found the easiest way to fix it was to actually do this manually by exporting this piece of geometry. I'm just going to export it onto the desktop because I don't need to keep it. And I'll export it as an OBJ because I generally like to work with OBJ. Old habits die hard. I'm just going to call it ASD because I don't care what it's called. Uh, now I'm going to open up the program manually. We're going to load up the model. Actually, it's still showing a problem here. It's very strange. Let's jump back into Max and have a look. Let's just isolate this piece of geometry. Again, that's a shadow. and I know it's a shadow because when I get a flat, bleh, flat color, a uh, geometry is okay. Let me I'm just going to throw a shell on this. Um, back to another poly. I just want to redo the uh, smoothing groups. Again, I have a feeling that's not a problem. That's just the shadowing in Max's viewport. Uh, I tend to do OBJ or FBX. It depends on what I'm using FBX for or, or everything in ZBrush. Yeah, I, te I tend to like uh, OBJ. I use FBX as well. If I'm working in Unreal, the Unreal Engine UE4, I'll use FBX. If I'm working in Mari or Substance Painter, I'll use OBJ because... Uh, I'm used to using OBJ. It's it, it can it's it's open source um, format that can be used to, in a lot of different 3D software. FBX can as well, but you, you've got different versions of F FBX, like you know 2010, 2011, 2014, whatever. So sometimes you can run into problems with FBX, whereas OBJ I've never had a problem. So I, I tend to stick to OBJ. I'm going to send this piece over to um, over to Rhizome again and have a look. 
Am I still getting a problem? That's very odd. Oops, I don't wanna I don't wanna close Max down. What is causing that? Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm the same. OBJ is generally what I stick to. Sniper Girl, Android Lust says even Photoshop success. OBJ, yeah, it does. That's a good point. You can use OBJ in Photoshop or you can load up a 3D model in Photoshop. Why you'd want to, I don't know, but you can. That is an option. Uh, I generally don't, like I said, don't understand why you'd want to do it in Photoshop, but I, I, guess, I guess it can have its uses. Uh, I think actually I remember an ad for um, the Microsoft Surface that they were running on TV here where this woman loaded up Photoshop, loaded Photoshop up on the Surface tablet and imported a 3D model so she could do some painting. Like she, she was doing, a, I don't know what it was. She was a school teacher, I think. So she was creating like this um, <clears throat> presentation for the school kids. She used it for that, but yeah, it's pretty basic. <laughs> I, I wouldn't do my 3D, 3D painting and modeling in, in Photoshop. Uh, Snapper Girl says, that's true. I grew up on Unreal Engine. reason I got used to FBX, yeah. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm used to the Unreal Engine. The very first engine, when, when the game Unreal came out, um, I used to use um, DAE or CAR or something. There was a, a particular model format that you used to have to use to import into uh, the Unreal Engine. It's only with the later engines after... I think Unreal Tournament, maybe, that they started letting you use FBX. <clears throat> DAE, I think it was DAE was the model format back in, in the day <laughs> with the Unreal Engine. But FBX is great. And I, again, FBX is um, made by Autodesk, but uh, Autodesk allow anyone to use it free so companies can incorporate it into their software. <clears throat> I guess you can call it open source, but, but created by Autodesk. Um, I might just do something a bit different here, I think. I'm going to go into my spline tool. Sniper says, I thought FBX was closed source. <laughs> um... I, I, look, it could be, but I'm, I thought that Autodesk uh, open sourced it. I think that's the reason that companies incorporate it in their software because they don't need to pay Autodesk anything for it. Now, that could be different to open source. It might not be open source. It could be called some, something else. So I, I could be wrong. I'd love to know what is wrong with this piece of geometry that um, Unfold is having such a problem with. I, I don't see any, anything wrong with it. See, I'm having I'm having a problem with my geometry as well now, Sniper Echo. You passed on your bad luck to me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you could be right, Sniper. It might not be open source, but it's free to use which is why companies are using it. And that's why Autodesk did it, I think. They did it so that um, to encourage other companies to to incorporate it into their software. You know, companies won't, won't pay to incorporate a format in their software, but if it's free, they'll do it. Drop it into Mudbox Android Lust. Yeah, I, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it over to Unfold. Now, Unfold is going to bitch and moan and say, no, I don't like it. Well, it won't bitch and moan, but you can see what it's doing here. It's showing these polygon faces that aren't there. So I'm going to try and do an unwrap on it. We'll see what happens. Because you never know until you try. Because as far as the unwrap goes, it looks okay. It, it unwraps the model without a problem. Even looking at the UV map here, I'm not seeing a huge problem. I mean, I'm seeing these uh, areas here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it back to Max. I'm going to throw down a checker pattern now inside of Max to check it. Just, just so we can check what it looks like.
Okay, the check is too big, so let's make our check as smaller. And let's have a look. I'm just going to turn these faces off so they don't distract me. And you can see it is UV mapped it correctly. So the problem is only the appearance of the mesh inside of uh, unpo inside of Rhizom UV. As far as the actual texture UV map goes, it's it's correct. It's fine. And that's good enough for me. I'm just going to reassign a plain texture for this piece. In fact. Uh, Just removing the material. I don't want to check a material on it. Uh, Sniper says, and the uh, the FBX FBX SDK is free, but the format is closed source. Yeah. Okay. So the SDK is free, which means you can incorporate it into your software, but the actual working of how it works is still held by Autodesk and not open source. That makes sense. Thanks for checking there, Sniper. Uh, but yeah, again, you can run into problems with FBX because there's different versions of FBX depending on what but what program you save it out from. Like Max, for example, because I'm using Max, this is Max 2018. I can save out as Max 2018 all the way back to about 2010, I think, as an FBX file. So yeah, and sometimes different versions can load differently in other software, other 3D software. So I stick to OBJ. You'll never have a problem if you stick to OBJ. Quick breaking shit, Sniper, uh, Sniper Girl says. <laughs> well, again, and you, but you see what I mean. The, it transferred the UV map over. It, it, so the only problem was actually in the look of the model inside of um, Verizon UV. The actual texture map itself is fine. Just just a visual thing. It won't, won't affect what we want at all. Let's jump back out of sub-object mode. Let's just continue UV mapping our pieces up. Again, it wants me to collapse my stack. I don't mind doing all of this by hand when the program does it so quickly. It did this the other day as well. I don't know why it did that. It transferred over okay. Must be having a problem connecting with their server, their license server. Okay, that's the last piece is this piece on top. And now we should have everything UV mapped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to regroup all of our pieces here. Let me just jump into the top viewport. It's easier for me to select it. Let's regroup it. Uh, everything's UV'd. Everything's ready. So now I can just uh, replace these ones that aren't UV'd. Slap is an inc incoming sniper says. <laughs> That was an anticlimax, that's right. No, no, no slap, no slap. I'll hold back. Uh, now I'm just going to duplicate these. Even the position doesn't really matter because I haven't decided how far apart I want them yet. But I do just want to make sure that, um, that I replace them with the ones that are UV mapped. because it will make my life 10 times easier in the long run. Just sort of eyeballing this, just again, I, 
I'm going to be moving it, changing it once I decide on the design for the base. Okay, we've done all of that. I think we should do another quick save. So I can have a drink of coffee while it's doing it. You guys and girls remember too, if you, do, if you are a sub to the channel, you can set up your own fill slaps. You don't need me to do it. Your fill slaps, your stink eyes, it's all explained on, on my website under sub perks. Look it up there. Okay, now. Now, now, now. I'm just going to select that urn so I can get something for Max to lock on to. Copy addiction. I love my. You guys know I love my copy. But if I didn't have my copy, I just I, I I couldn't survive. I couldn't work. I would just be a dribbling mess without copy. I need and love copy. Love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, even though I come from my like my mother was British, so tea was always drunk when I was a child. I'm Australian. I was born here, but because my mum was British, she drank a lot of tea, and because we were her kids, we drank tea. Uh, but when I when I turned like when when I grew up and became a man, uh, I decided I like coffee more. So I've been drinking coffee constantly. Love coffee. Still don't mind a cup of tea, but prefer to have coffee. Coffee is the first thing I reach for every morning when I wake up. I don't eat breakfast. I have a cup of coffee. Uh, now this urn, the urn come fountain. I, I I want it to be more of a statement. So I'm going to scale it up because it's too small at the moment. So let's, and I've gotten to, to this position so I can decide how big I want it. And I do want it quite big. So like I said, I wanted to make a statement underneath of this um, uh, rotunda. I'm just going to move it back up so it's um, level with the base of the step. Move about there. I think that'll be good. So what I'm, like I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have particle effect water coming out of the mouths, and that's going to be dropping into a pond area down through here. So we wanted something nice and big, and I'm going to put plants in the top of it. So it's 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 a uh, it's an urn, but also a fountain. I wanted to make sure it's nice and big, so it makes a really bold statement. Might be a bit too big. <laughs> Snappy Girl says, oh God, I hate coffee. You need something like uh, mocha or vanilla or anything to kill the horrid coffee taste. I actually do have flavouring as well. I, I like coffee just plain. Um, occasionally I'll put flavouring in it if I feel uh, like having something a little bit different. Uh, and I have butterscotch and coconut. They're the two that I put in coffee if I want something a little different. But I, I like coffee just on its own. I'm just going to scale this back just a little bit because it's um, a little bit too big. <sighs> Max, you do this all the time to me. Why you do this? Let's just pull it down a little bit. And that's better. I need to allow enough room to have some plants up here. I don't want it too high. Uh, but I do want it high enough so that when we do a render, a beauty render in view, we can see the spouts of water coming out of the, um, the lion's mouth. You're allergic to coconut? Oh, God, I couldn't imagine being allergic to coconut, Sniper Girl. I love coconut. Love it, love it, love it. Love coconut. Even the smell of it. Love the smell of it too. Uh, but if you're allergic to it, then that, that's a bit of a bummer. Android Lust says even vanilla coffee has that uh, coffee aftertaste, or the vanilla ones I've had. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think that urn size is better. So what have we accomplished here? We have our UV mapped uh, everything. I don't think there's anything left that needs to be UV mapped. 
I'm just going to check these. Actually, I don't know if I did UV map these. Let me just check. No, we have, we still have to UV map uh, these brackets that go underneath of the um the rotunda. But apart from that, I'm pretty sure everything else is UV mapped. That one is. Don't think the base is actually. Let me just start uh, quickly send that over. Smurfberry Barbecue, we were just talking about you, saying how it was your birthday yesterday. So everybody wish Smurfberry a happy birthday for yesterday. I hope you're going well, Smurfberry. I hope you're good. I hope you had a good night since I spoke to you yesterday. And that should work for what we want. I'm just going to send that back. Okay, so now the only thing I know that we need to uh, UV map we did these, yeah, we did these, is the uh, the little supports that sit underneath of the uh, columns. Everything else is UV mapped. So we, apart from the bits that we haven't added yet, which is the uh, terrace base and these stairs, but we'll pick up that, I think, next week when I come back on Monday. It's getting everything nice and organised here so I can do a save. Let's close that down. Let's do a save. But I think we might leave it there for today, guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Um, on Monday when I come back, we're nearly finished creating this now. So when I come back on Monday, we'll put the terrace base in. We'll work out the stairs and we'll put the, um, the, the ironwork in for the railings. Then we can jump straight into Substance Painter and Mari and start texturing up the bits that aren't textured up yet. And also just uh, correcting some of the textures that we need to, to fix up. Like uh, I want to do some correction on the um, on the texture for this photogrammetry piece here. I'm going to get rid of those two dots. So all that sort of cleanup work we'll do in Mari. And we'll start to do that once I've got the base in, which we will do on Monday next week. Um, yes, yeah, so thank you guys so very much for hanging out with me and for watching and for being here. It was great to see all you guys and girls. I'm glad you're all well. It was good to see you, Sniper Girl, and thank you to those guys and girls that uh, subbed to me. I do appreciate it. Um, I'll be back on Monday next week, and we will pick up where we left off. You guys and girls have a great weekend. Take care.